Hello everyone, so this time I would like to share a video on how to animate a buckle as a trim. So this time I have a simple romper and I have this buckle that I created a long time ago for some other project. So right now I have it as a pattern piece um, because I created it in Clove. But the first step I will do, I will select these pattern pieces and export OBJ selected and I will export it as OBJ. And here these are the export um, settings, nothing too special. And now I can delete it. However, I need one piece. Uh, I need to keep one piece, so I will keep this one and I will deactivate it. Now I will import and add the buckle add and in this time I will add it as trim because as you might know if you import something as avatar it's a really solid object so it doesn't move uh, once you start the simulation and trim is an object that you can attach to a pattern piece and once you do simulation the object will move together with that fabric. So here is my buckle. Right now it is imported as trim, as you can see, and uh, you can know when something is imported as trim, you can see this little glue bottle. And with glue bottle, you can attach the trim um, to a certain pattern piece. So first of all, I need to create a belt. And for that, what I usually do is I measure the waist because I like to use um, kind of specific values for belts especially when it comes to belts uh, you have to make sure that all the simulations and layers are quite stable so that means the belt should not be too stiff and too short because once the belt is too tight it will collide a lot with the garment underneath because the force of the belt will always try to kind of press the garment underneath so there will always be movement there will always be collision so that's why it's good to be mindful about uh, the measurement of the belt so that was 76 centimeters so i will put two extra centimeter and do 78 and the height of the belt will be four centimeter. Now I will position the belt. So now the belt is added and as you, as you can see, it really kind of tries to crawl up. So it's very slippery, this belt. Yeah, so for the belt, I will use this fabric and um, yeah, first of all, I will adjust the physical properties of this fabric. So I want to make it very stiff. So let's say, let's do 70, 70, 70. And I will increase friction to 80. So basically once you put it on 100, it's very sticky. And if it's on zero, it's very slippery. So I will do 80. And I think all the other aspects are fine. And now you can see the belt is much more sticky. So it doesn't slip so much and it doesn't crawl upwards. So this is uh, very, very useful when it comes to belts. Okay, I think this is fine. And I will remake, rename it belt. Okay, so now I have the belt ready. And I will do some uh, construction as a base for the buckle. Because when it comes to animating trims, it's very important where the trim is attached to and how the pattern piece is moving and how the fabric is moving and everything. If you attach trim to something that is very unstable and it's moving a lot and um, yeah, it's, it's easily freaked out, then you know your trim will be a nightmare as well. 
So that's why it's, it's quite good to create like a stable construction with pattern pieces and attach the trim to that stable construction, then um, it will, I think it will be much easier to um, get a nice trim animation very quickly without like doing a lot of trial and error in animation. So first of all, I will attach the trim to the belt and it's quite important to click on the point that you want attach um, the trim with. So for example, if I click here and click on the glue button, you can see that it's trying to attach the corner. So it's quite important to click in the middle and then click on the glue box, sorry, glue bottle, <laughs> and then click where you want it to be attached. So here. Okay, and I want to resize it a little bit. Like this. And now once I simulate, you can see um, the trim is very heavy, so it is really pulling down the belt. So I don't really want the trim to be too heavy. So I will decrease the weight to 20 grams. And to be honest, less is more, so I will put it on 10 grams. I don't really need it to be super heavy, but of course, it depends on what kind of visual effect you want. Okay, now I will create a piece for the middle that will cover this middle part. So that's quite important piece because the trim doesn't really interact with the pattern piece. So for example, if you would go and try to pull this middle part through, you know, it's, it's the trim is moving with it. So that doesn't really, you cannot really make it like it would be in real life. That's why you need to create all these extra construction pieces. So first of all, I will create internal line here. I just check in 3D where the hole more or less is. Click there. And that's where my line will be on the belt. Okay, I can switch on internalize to see what I'm doing and whether that's good. I think that's good. And now I will create a pattern piece for that. Oh, first I need to measure. So this is 16 and this is 18, 20, 30, 4. So let's do 40 because it needs some extra length to create that space. You will see. Okay, and now I will sew it and during this time I can just freeze everything and keep only the belt pieces unfrozen. Okay, so this piece I will put on particle distance 5 because it's important that it uh, creates um, space. So as you can see, even with the extra measurement, there's still not enough space for the middle. So I will add another centimeter. And now I have enough space. And you can see that um, yeah, the visual effect is achieved, that it looks like um, the belt is going through this buckle but in in reality <clears throat> we cheated a, a little bit so i want to move this for maybe two millimeter so it doesn't peek through yeah looks quite good and another thing you can do is offset as internal line and do one millimeter just a few offsets and then select those offsets and put it on oh, maybe this is too aggressive yeah so that will kind of 
try to, how to say, bend, bend this part. Otherwise, um, this part tends to interact with the buckle. And then maybe I can reduce a little bit. I think the, these details um, as we go have to be adjusted as well. But however, I think this is okay and I can switch off these internal lines. Okay. So the next thing, I will add the belt, the strap of the belt. I don't know, I don't know how to call it. Is it that strap? I don't think that's accurate. Just the rest, rest of the belt I will add. And I will do maybe 40 centimeter and four centimeter height. And this I will attach to the line that I created here. I will do arrangement. And you can see it it comes through the buckle quite a lot so what is important is to create another internal line and attach this part of the belt to internal line so i will add it here and measure 25 okay and now i will offset as internal line 25 millimeter and i will sew it down so you can see it's much better. So it cannot interact with the buckle anymore. And I also want to create a nice fold line. Wait, the wrong pattern piece. Like this. And then delete this line. But as you can see, the belt is very, very stiff. For this part, it's very important that the belt is stiff. But for the part that is kind of hanging, you, you do want a more natural look, I think. Well, of course, depends on um, your expectation. So I will reduce the bend values. and add this fabric to only this piece. And you can see it's much more bendable now and looks more natural. And reduce particle distance. Yep. Looks quite good, I think. And uh, this has happened that very often it will like fall and go inside the buckle anyway. So would be good to um, secure this part a little bit so that it doesn't go so much towards the buckle and for that I use the tack tool. Tack tool is really good tool but quite often when you use it in animation it tends to add some fakeness to it so you have to be kind of careful whether it works or not. And this time I will add seven millimeter thread length so it's not like very obviously attached to it. And I think this will kind of help to keep, keep it away. Maybe I need to move it a little bit more over here. So now it is ready and one last step. Mm. As you can see from front, I think the line, oh no, that is not the line, okay. No, never mind. Okay, and now one last thing I will add. I will add kind of a buffer pattern piece behind the buckle. Because when you will start animation, 
this fabric underneath the buckle it will move and it will create wrinkles and very often these wrinkles will try will interact with the buckle so we'll come through the buckle and it will be very difficult to position the buckle in in a way that is not interacting with the wrinkles so that's why I use a buffer piece so this this is the base of the actual buckle so I will just adjust some setting and I will create par uh, fabric for it. I want it to be yeah, very um, stiff. So these values I will put on 90. Okay. Now this I will move away. I know it seems it's a bit um, tedious work but at the end um, I think it's worth it yeah and then put it here and then I want to sew it to the belt so it keeps its position um, attached to the belt so I have linked editing here I will remove that and just I mean I'm I'm extremely precise but that's doesn't really matter to be so precise so this will be the middle so the middle now is attached and I also want to attach the side lines to the belt and I have to uh, find the point the line where to attach it around here Okay, like this. And this part I will attach to this to to this line of this piece. Maybe I need to adjust the, the measurement a little bit. Otherwise, it's it's starting to bend in a way that I don't want. I don't need it to bend. Okay, that seems okay. Maybe I will reduce the density a little bit. So it doesn't drag the belt down so much. And now I will attach the buckle to this buffer piece. Oh, I did it wrong. So click on the middle, glue bottle. Yes. maybe you have to put in some fine tuning in this um, buffer piece so the animation will the first trial of animation will of course show you what adjustments you need to do so this is just really the prep okay so I think this is good I want to add some more space maybe that's too much let's say three millimeter Okay, so far looks good and one thing once you do this sewing make sure you switch off intensity because when you do animation you record the animation and then you realize oh I have this sewing line there which I don't really want to see if you have animation recorded and if you put the intensity on zero mm, then your animation is deleted so just in case, remove all the sim uh, all the sewing that you don't really need. So basically, all this 
um, all this sewing you really don't need. Okay, now the prep work is more or less done. Oh, so this is without the little piece here, but of course we can add that piece as well. And I will do it really quickly. Let's do seven millimeter. Let's check position. Should be okay. Convert to hole. And I will add, oops. I will add some part for the um, eyelet. Yeah, I want to add the eyelet too. Okay, this one I don't need. Cut and sew. Here is my eyelet. It's not very smooth because it's really a small piece. Mm, it's kind of annoying, of course, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> and then for eyelet, I will create new fabric. Mm, actually, I want a buckle fabric. I think that's better. I lay, I lit. And then I will add some metal effect. And also remove this normal maps because I don't need them. Maybe increase a little bit. Yeah, not the smoothest thing. Anyway, you know, these things you can uh, fine tune as much as you need. And eventually you can also add an actual like eyelet if you prefer that. And then I will import add the, the little piece that goes through here. I don't know the correct name for it, but I created it before. This piece. It's just a random. It's not like the best thing ever, um, but just for this demonstration, I thought it's fine. I didn't want to spend too much time making it. Oh. Okay, I will glue it. Which part should I glue it to? I will glue it to the buffer. Okay, it's quite right. The color is wrong. What's the name of this? Oasted? Fro frosted window. That's sassy. Okay, I let what values 30, then we'll use the same ones. Here you go. Okay. So all the very exhausting and annoying prep work is pretty much done. So we can <laughs> we can get to the fun part and start simulating and seeing what will happen. So this piece, um, you can keep it visible or you can also change opacity. Okay, let's simulate. Looks quite nice. So for the animation trials, I always leave my garments on particle distance 10 and all the other details, except the really small details that are very relevant, um, those, I, um, those I put on 5 or they're very, very, very delicate. And I want the straps, 
I want to add more friction to the straps, so I will copy this, name it straps, straps, and for the straps, I will just increase friction. And it's always good to already start simulating with the fitting accurate fabric because this fitting mode, it not only will really clean up your garment simulation, make everything nice, it will also kind of prepare your garment for the animation. Because in animation mode, when, um, when recording animation, you do use this um, stable simulation. What was it called? Animation stable in this case, it's called in simulation, it's called accurate fitting. I don't know why they wouldn't just call it the same, but anyway. Yeah, so I have just the Feifei avatar and I will just pick the first motion on the list from close default avatar motions. And um, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm not changing any properties here. I'm just gonna see what happens. And from the first trial, you can already see what is not working out and uh, what kind of things you need to adjust and because this is very simple garment, particle distance is quite um, high, then uh, the simulation is pretty quick. I don't do the whole animation, just until when she starts to turn. Overall, it's already looking quite stable, I think. Okay, so let's check it out a little bit closer. So I put on real time and one fourth of the time so we can slowly see what is happening. So I think first thing that is freaking out too much is um, this strap. So I need to adjust that. Also, I don't like how it jumps up and down. So I will try to see how, uh, how I can fix that, but overall I think the simulation turned out quite nicely. I think I will add more friction to the straps and also let's check a little bit closer what is happening with the buckle and this small piece. You see it, it is so stable, I am impressed and very happy about this result. I think it is coming through a little bit, no, not yet. But also, if there are some issues, you can go frame by frame, and then when you find a frame where something is wrong, you can just adjust the trim. It will not affect your simulation so uh, your an recorded animation so that's a really really great thing about this that you pretty much can fix every single e frame for example something like this happens and you can turn it a little bit so many many issues you can fix like this and it doesn't really take too much time it sounds terrible like oh i have to fix every single frame but it's not that bad really not that bad okay yeah, it is kind of floating quite a lot so i think i need to do some adjustments here so that it doesn't float so much. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. Let's do a little bit of, of adjustments. Of course, you can, sp you can spend like 10 hours on it, like adjusting every small detail un until it's like 100% perfect. But not always the, the, this crazy perfection is necessary. So. I guess it's very good before you do animation, it's very good to kind of think about um, what kind of view, what kind of like views you will use for your rendering, from which angles you want to look at your garment. So if you don't, 
if you don't need all angles to be perfect then you know you don't you shouldn't make the garment perfect from all angles that's what i will always think okay and then i will adjust the strap friction to 100 and then body friction i think the top part maybe i want to make it um higher friction as well so let's see what happens then let's put 80 and the belt what is happening with the belt we'll put 100 friction maybe higher density that sometimes helps stretch value i need to keep as it is and for this piece i have noticed that yeah once you increase density it helps it helps to keep mm, the simulation more stable and it doesn't flow fly around so much so the friction i already have and then yeah, the bending value on oh, the the stretch values also decreasing stretch values also help to keep it a little bit more stable okay and let's try again let's see what happens Yeah, I think it looks much better now. It doesn't jump up and down as much. I definitely think increasing friction values for top was a good was a good idea. I think I, I pulled here. That's why it freaked out a little bit. Let's fix the position. And you see, even once you fix the position at the first frame where you start to see issues, even in the next frames, it's already fixed. Because the buckle really follows the position of where it's attached to. okay so i think that's pretty much it for this time sorry for the very long video but i think this topic is kind of so big and so complex that you know the, the the more prep work you do the the better your animations will turn out that's that's what i've learned from my experience <laughs> so there i think there are many like really small things that it's good to do and that will help you to have a nice result but of course this can be improved again and again and again and um, especially when I will put the garment on particle all the garment on particle distance 5 and simulate again it, it's not guaranteed that everything will work so well um, because you can you can animate the same garment several times and each time will be quite a bit different um, so yeah even once the particle distance will be lowered I think even then I have to do some trials and and maybe fix some small issues that appear but uh, yeah so this is pretty much it I hope um, this was this video was useful for you and yeah it's a really beautiful detail the buckle and having a nice belt for the garment that's a that's always a detail that I appreciate so I, I hope to see some of it in your work as well so yeah thank you for watching and have a good day bye